In this session, we will look at the ProSite database. ProSite is a database of patterns and profiles that represent protein domains and motifs. Our goal will be to take a protein sequence and predict where particular motifs are in that particular protein. For our objectives, we want to be able to distinguish between profiles and patterns, and then start with a protein sequence and search that ProSite database. The database consists of both patterns and profiles. And then analyze the output. We will see something called the high frequency match pattern. And I will explain what that is and be able to distinguish between patterns that are not high frequency match and the ones that are. First, let's look at some basic definitions. We will call a motif a biologically important region of a protein. So basically, a particular type of structure or a particular type of function. So something that is biologically relevant within a protein. A profile would be a quantitative description of that motif, whereas a pattern is a qualitative description of a motif. So ProSite uses both profiles and patterns to describe motifs. So let's look at a qualitative description of a motif, and that's a pattern. That's represented by what's called a regular expression. For instance, this is a protein phosphorylation motif. So in brackets is an ST followed by an X followed by in brackets an R and a K. What that means is the S for serine and the T for threonine, that means that in the first position of the pattern is serine or threonine. X means any amino acid, so that means serine or threonine, followed by any amino acid, followed by R or K, arginine or lysine. So everything within a bracket is an OR. So S or T, followed by X, followed by R or K. That's an example of a short pattern. It's relatively short, and it can occur very often in a protein. Now let's look at a longer and hypothetical regular expression that kind of explains most of the possible scenarios. So if you look at this pattern, E, X, 2, F, H, M, X, 4, P, and L, well, what does that mean? It means that there is an E in the first position. That means glutamic acid. X2 means followed by any two amino acids. So you get an E followed by any two in the next positions followed by, in the fourth position, would be an F, H, or an M. And then the next four positions, which would be 5, 6, 7, and 8, can be anything. Then you see braces, and braces mean not. So in this case, not proline in the ninth position, followed by leucine. So any protein that has that particular pattern anywhere in its sequence would match that pattern in a database search. On the last line, you'll notice that the notation X24 means a stretch of unknown amino acids that could be 2, 3, or 4 in length. So that sort of gives you an idea of how to qualitatively represent a motif. Profiles describe motifs using PSSMs, or possums. Basically, matrix algebra is used to represent how many times an amino acid appears at what position. So rather than qualitatively describing what's there, we're going to quantitate, using many proteins with that motif, exactly which amino acids are at which positions within that motif. The ProSite database uses possums for its profiles. Other databases use a different quantitative method called hidden Markov models, or HMMs, and we won't get into that in this session. So, Let's start with the ProSite database. ProSite is a database of protein patterns and protein profiles. So if I take a protein sequence, in this case it's RE11 from Arabidopsis, which is a plant protein. I'll leave it to you to investigate a little bit. Its GenBank identifier is 2912536. You can look that up or you can search PubMed to find out a little bit more about this protein. We're going to use it to search the ProSite patterns and profiles. The question is, what motifs are in this protein? That's our goal. Okay, so here is our protein sequence. 
And in ProSight, if you scroll down just a little, you will find the quick scan window, and we'll just paste that in. There is a box that is often checked that reads exclude motifs with a high probability of occurrence. And we will uncheck that box. So I will get the high probability of occurrence patterns. Those are the short patterns that match frequently that happen all the time in proteins. So a quick scan with that particular protein. Okay, so here's the sequence. It is 542 amino acids long. And we have a lot of hits. A lot of those are high frequency match hits. So above this green bar that reads hits by patterns with a high probability of occurrence, anything above that is a pretty strong match. And you could be confident that the protein has this motif. So it looks like I have one profile hit and one pattern hit. The profile hit was to what's called a zinc finger ring type profile, or the zinc finger ring two motif. It looks like it comes toward the middle of the protein. The diagram here underneath the ruler shows exactly where the zinc finger is within the protein. The protein is shown from N terminus at the left to C terminus. You see a link to the accession number PS50089. It takes me to documentation about this particular profile. You see the zinc finger ring type signature and profile. A zinc finger is a common motif in DNA binding proteins. Not all DNA binding proteins have them, but a class of DNA binding proteins do have them. The idea behind the ring finger is that ring is actually an acronym that stands for really interesting new gene. I didn't name it. But you'll see documentation about some proteins that have this profile and what this is known to do. The zinc finger plays a role in what's called the ubiquitination pathway. So you get a lot of information about that particular motif. So we know that if we took this sequence and searched this database, it looks like we have a zinc ring finger. And also, look back at the pattern. It's also qualitatively matched a pattern. We see that from position 320 to 329, remember we matched a profile from 129 to 185, and we matched a different zinc finger pattern from 320 to 329. And here are the amino acids that fit the pattern. Specifically, the capital letters are the ones that actually match the pattern. So I'm going to click the PS number here. That takes me to the pattern documentation. And here is the consensus pattern. That means the pattern that was matched was C, followed by any amino acid, followed by H, followed by any amino acid, and followed by one of these, L-I-V-M-F, or Y, which is a lot of hydrophobic amino acids, followed by another cysteine, followed by any two amino acids, followed by another cysteine, and ending with one of these amino acids. Now, I should point out that below the high-frequency match bar are a series of short patterns. You see a phosphorylation site. You see another protein kinase C phosphorylation site. You see that it occurs frequently at positions 4 to 6 and 57 to 59 and at other places. The reason that that bar is there is that this is a pattern that happens very frequently. I can go to the documentation and show that, well, that is the pattern that we just saw in this video. S or T, followed by anything, followed by R or K. Happens all the time. You see in red letters, pattern with a high probability of occurrence. So proteins that have this pattern can be phosphorylated at the serine or threonine by protein kinase C. However, because this pattern is so common, it frequently occurs at sites that are not phosphorylated. So if it has this pattern, it could be a phosphorylation site, or it could be a false positive that it happened to occur by chance. Okay, so the best way to really examine ProSite is to find some protein and run it through the ProSite scan. Look to see what domains and motifs you hit. Typically, the goal is to take an unknown protein sequence and ask the question, 
what motifs are in this particular protein. So good luck searching.